Hey, how you doing? Thanks for joining me. In this video, I want to take a look at two specific rules in the 2015 version of the Canadian Electrical Code, both dealing with individual uh, branch circuit calculations on motors. The first one I want to take a look at is 28106, where we're going to walk through how to calculate those actual branch circuit conductor sizes. And the second rule is 28200, which is going to help us calculate out our overcurrent protection for these individual motors. For our overload protection, there's another video where we walk through how to size those overloads based off the service factors given on a motor. So we're not going to take care of that in this video. But let's start with 28106. Okay, so 28106 is broken up into a couple of different sub rules and we have that represented with our two different types of motors. For simplicity's sake, we're going to keep um, squirrel cage induction motors, full voltage start um, when we get to calculating on our overcurrent devices. But for calculating our actual conductors, the thing that we care about is what is the duty rating of the motor? What are we expecting out of that motor? Okay, so for our first one here, we're going to take a look at 28. 106 sub rule 1, okay, which deals with a continuous duty motor. Effectively, what we're saying is this motor is going to be expected to be on all the time, so we're dealt with in sub rule 1, okay. And what it tells me in sub rule 1 is I'm going to take the FLA, which is the full load current rating of my motor, what it's going to run at at its maximum load. I'm going to take the FLA and I'm going to multiply it by 125%. It tells me this branch circuit conductor has to be at least 125% of FLA. So let's find out what 125% of FLA is first. We're going to take our 56 amps, okay, and we're going to multiply it by 1.25, which gives us a minimum ampacity of 70 amps. What that means is I have to have a conductor that has at least an ampacity of 70 amps in order to handle 125% of my FLA. Okay, so 28104 actually tells us that for our motor calculation purposes, we're going to use a 75 degree column in table two, unless we're dealing with a class A type insulation. I'm not going to worry about the insulation types uh, in this particular example, but we know that from 28104, we're going to use the 75 degree column when we're sizing the ampacity of our conductor. So we're going to go table two in the 75 degree column, and based off this 70 amp minimum ampacity, we're going to choose a number four, which has an 85 amp ampacity. Okay, I know that 70 amps is the absolute minimum that I can be with my conductor size, so we go up to the next available size again, which is a number four based off of that hundred or that uh, table 275 degrees. Okay, then we're going to move over. Before we move to the overcurrent on this branch, we're going to go over here and we're going to size the conductor for the branch circuit feeding this motor here as well. Again, 230 volt, three phase, squirrel cage induction, and it has the full voltage start in there as well. I've got the service factor marked of 1.1, but it tells me in this motor it's an intermittent duty, which now we're saying that it's not expected to be on all the time. And because of that, we're gonna have correction factors that we can apply to the FLA of the motor. Okay, so if I take a look at 28106 sub rule two, it actually tells me, it doesn't give me a multiplier right in sub rule two. What it does is it refers me to table 27. Okay, and table 27 has a bunch of different duty ratings on these motors, and with that duty rating in mind, it has the rows determine what the, the amount of time is that we're gonna actually have this motor on for. Okay, and in this case, I've got it listed as, listed as intermittent duty and five minute rating. So if we check out table 27, table 27, we're gonna go down, until we find intermittent duty and then we're going to go across until we find the actual time rating for that intermittent duty. And in this case, intermittent duty with five minutes, we're going to see that it tells me 85%. What that means is I can actually apply an 85% multiplier to my FLA. My continuous duty, my multiplier was 125%. So we ended up going with a bigger branch circuit than the FLA was rated for. In this case, because it's running less, okay, we're gonna take our 34 amps and we're gonna multiply it by that 0.85, which is our 85%. And we're gonna end up with a minimum ampacity in this case of 28.9 amps, which is actually smaller than the FLA, but that's okay. Okay, so we're gonna take that 28.9 amps and we're gonna go table two, 75 degree column again, and we're gonna buy a number 10 gauge good for 35 amps.
Okay, so we've sized both of our branch circuit conductors for these individual motors. Again, 28106 sub row 1 deals with continuous duty rated motors. Okay, 28106 sub row 2 deals with non-continuous rated motors. And again, this is just one example. There could be a short time duty, a varying duty, different time increments that they give me. I would still just reference table 27 for anything that's non-continuous. Okay, so 28106, we've got that covered. We're going to take a look at 28200, where we're sizing the overcurrent devices for our motors. Okay, so when I go to table 29, I don't care so much about the duty rating anymore. What I actually care about at table 29, if we take a look at table 29, the parameters that they're giving me, I need to know what type of motor I'm dealing with, what type of starting the motor has, what type of overcurrent protection I actually have on that branch as well. Those are all going to help me determine, again, that multiplying factor that I'm going to get from table 29. Okay, so again, we're going to start with our FLA of 56 amps. Okay, because 56 amps, our FLA is always our magic number for our motor calculations. Over here, we have our 34 amps. Okay, notice I've got a breaker drawn for this branch. And over here, I have a fuse drawn, and I've indicated that it's a time delay fuse. Again, that's important when we go to table 29. So for our continuous duty motor here with our 56 amps, when we go to table 29, what we'll see is if we look at our three-phase squirrel cage induction motor, with full voltage start and protection with a breaker, it's going to tell me that my multiplier is 250%. So we're going to do that. We're going to take that 56 amps and multiply it by 2.5 or 250%. Okay, That's going to give me a maximum calculated value in this case of 140 amps. That is the absolute maximum setting that my overcurrent device could be. Imagine for a second that you can actually dial that thing up. The highest you could go is 140 amps because it tells me in 28400, or sorry, 28200 rather, I cannot exceed the values from table 29. So once I do that calculation, 140 amps is my absolute max. We're going to go to table 13 to select an overcurrent device. Okay, from table 13, there is no 140 amp overcurrent device, and it tells me that I can't exceed the value. So we're going to go down to the next available size, which on table 13 tells me a 125 amp breaker. Okay, so again, that table 29 value is our multiplier, which we cannot exceed. Okay, now we move on to our intermittent duty motor here, where we have our 34 amp FLA. Okay, and again, to keep it simple, we went with a squirrel cage induction motor, full voltage start, okay, and also we have our time delay fuse that's protecting our motor branch circuit. So when we go to table 29 and we go down on that left-hand side, we're going to find that three-phase squirrel cage induction motor. If you had anything else from table 29, different starting methods or a single-phase motor or a direct current motor, you would continue down that column until you find the proper row. Once we find that proper row again, three phase squirrel cage induction, full voltage start, we're going to go across until we find the proper protection that we have. In this case, we have a time delay fuse. And for a time delay fuse on a full voltage start, three phase squirrel cage, we're going to see a multiplier of 175% or 1.75. Okay, we run the numbers, we should see a value of 59.5 amps. Again, that is the absolute maximum according to 28200 that my overcurrent could be. So if I'm looking for a calculated value or a maximum setting, this would be the number that I'm looking for. If I wanted to find the actual rating of the overcurrent device, I would go to table 13 and I would select, again, I cannot exceed the values. I would have to go down to a 50 amp fuse in this case, a time delay fuse. Okay, so hopefully this has helped. Thank you for watching.